Okay, so this one has an animation, so it's having a little bit of trouble opening the PPT. So I'm going to do it as a screen capture. So here we go. Uh, let's look at some animations here. I don't know what they are. Okay, this is about the uh, ocean currents. Uh, let's look at the subtropical gyres. Uh, so you have all the warm and cold currents here that we talked about. The North Equatorial Current, the South Equatorial Current. Uh, we can also show the uh, more focused uh, equatorial countercurrents in each ocean. Uh, this is showing uh, uh, right now the, the Northern Hemisphere summer or monsoonal circulation because in the Indian Ocean you can see that the uh, Somali current is very clearly seen here. Uh, and it creates a little gyre in the Arabian Sea and there is also circulation in the Bay of Bengal. There is a North Equatorial Current in the Indian Ocean which only exists during the Southwest Monsoon or the Northern Summer Season. Uh, the Equatorial Counter Current is in the Southern Hemisphere. There is a South Equatorial Current in the Southern Hemisphere. You have the Gulf Stream, the Kuroshio, Brazil Current, the Gullis Current, Leeuwin current, East Australian current, and so on. And you'll see here that unlike the Canary current and Benguela current, Peru current, and Canary current, the East Australian, uh, uh, the Western Australia and the Eastern Indian Ocean in the south has a coastal current called Leeuwin current, which in Dutch means lioness. Uh, the Dutch colonized Indonesia, so they have behind some history uh, in the name of the currents. That current is going south and not north as the other uh, eastern boundary currents do in the gyre. So the Indian Ocean gyre in the south is closed differently than in the other two oceans. Why? Because basically this open channel through the Indonesian seas receives warm fresh water from the West Pacific Ocean called the Indonesian through flow. It is flow that's going through the Indonesian seas. That warm water piles up on Northwest Australia and creates a pressure gradient down the coast which drives a current that's actually going against the winds that are the southwesterly uh, the southeasterly trade winds. Okay, so the circulation in southern gyre of the Indian Ocean is a little bit different because of the Indonesian through flow. Just remember that. So Indian Ocean circulation is different because of monsoonal circulation, and the the southern Indian Ocean gyre is different because of this leeway current. Okay, so. Let's show the high latitude currents. Uh, we talked about the western boundary currents based on trade winds and westerlies. For the uh, subtropical gyres, you have to use the same principles of uh, Coriolis increasing uh, and creating a mass transport and winds putting in vorticity and the western boundary having to move the water in the right direction and producing the right vorticity. What is the difference? You have westerlies and polar easterlies, so you are creating mass transport in the opposite direction, and you are putting vorticity that is positive uh, in the subtropical, in the subpolar gyre, as opposed to the subtropical gyre, where we were putting in negative vorticity from the wind. So the western boundary intensification still happens because it is still the only way to satisfy the mass balance and vorticity balance. So OHEO occurs, uh, sorry, Labrador current occurs here in the uh, Atlantic Ocean and you get the OHEO current here in the Pacific uh, Ocean. N the Indian Ocean is in a low latitude uh, so during the winter monsoon it gets a southward flowing Somali current so the entire current system reverses as we will see uh, later on. We can put wind belts on top. We know the southeasterly and northeasterly trades, the prevailing westerlies, and the polar easterlies. Looks like a mess, but essentially this is how you have to add the concepts in your wind. How the winds got set up, how the oceans are being forced, what happens because the ocean has boundaries, what happens because Coriolis has uh, latitudinal variation, 
and what happens because winds are putting in vorticity into the ocean. All these are current for February to March, okay? So uh, that's something we have to remember uh, as well. We can, uh, Siri is trying to talk to me. We can also add the deep uh, currents here, which we haven't introduced yet. There is a circulation we will see later on in this chapter called the uh, thermohaline circulation, but I have already mentioned that the water that is very heavy forms at a few places in the world ocean, sink to the bottom and set up the deep ocean circulation or the density driven circulation which we have mentioned turns out that the North Atlantic is one particular region where the North Atlantic deep water hap uh, formation happens. That water shown in blue flows south. There is deep and bottom waters, heavy waters forming in the Southern Ocean, in the Weddell Sea and Ross Sea that we'll see later on. The North Atlantic deep water mixes with this Southern Ocean as we will see later on. And those waters that circulate in the Southern Ocean then get pushed into the Indian and Pacific Ocean and they become surface waters, come back out and go back to where uh, they sink. This is a um, thermohaline circulation that we will study in more detail further on in this chapter. This turns out to play a very important role in uh, climate, climate variability and climate change. Why? Because ocean takes up the heat, greenhouse gases and so on and keeps them for a long time.